Hi, let's talk about escape velocity. If you scroll back to the data booklet, you'll be able to see there's an equation uh, called the VESC. ESC obviously is referred as uh, escaping. So this is escape velocity that we are trying to derive soon. And the equation is root 2gm over r. So let's just copy it down there first. All right, so before you give yourself a chance and time to derive this equation, let me show you the context first. So we are talking about when there is a planet, or it doesn't really matter, it's Earth or whatsoever, and you are trying to launch a certain object, okay? So with a mass m, the planet is with a big M mass. And now you are trying to um, launch it with a velocity, and this velocity, minimum minimum velocity has to be equal to this escape velocity so that this mass can reach all the way until to infinity and stop there so that means if you have tiny bit more of energy let's say one joule then you can reach beyond the infinity well of course this is a philosophical idea but like the idea is you have more energy then you need to overcome the gravitational potential energy. Okay, so this is a hint and the contest. So for now, you may now to try derive the equation yourself and also think about the three assumptions we need for deriving this equation. Pause the video now. Okay, so let me show you how we can do it. So first of all, the escape velocity obviously is related to the kinetic energy that you have uh, when you launch this small mass. So that's the energy you need to overcome the gravitational potential energy from this planet surface to infinity. And according to what we learned, uh, then that can be evaluated by the equation negative g big M small m over out. So uh, let's just give it a small out. So and assuming small out is the radius of the earth. And so that should equal to the half mv squared. So if you barely have that energy uh, to reach to the infinity, then that will be the escape velocity we are finding out. So we can put down esc here to indicate this is escape velocity. And so if you're wondering why there's a negative, but then this office is going to be a positive value, uh, then you have to think about the work done direction. Uh, the negative value is referring to when we have the potential here and moving the objects from infinity to here. So this will be a negative work done. But now we are going the other way around. So uh, we can just simply take it as positive or you can take the absolute value. It doesn't really matter to be honest. Or the other way you can think about it is uh, think of the total energy at at the beginning uh, will equal to zero so that will mean uh, ke plus gpe would equal to zero when you uh, get that energy to overcome at the end when you are at infinity because when you're at, at infinity the gp is going to be equal to zero and according to what we mentioned in the contest uh, we want the speed to be at least the minimum to be zero not of course not negative like going the other way or, or going too fast so it's going to be zero exactly zero as well so uh, this is how we can construct this equation as well so if you do this uh, then this may be easier to understand uh, because you have half mv square plus the negative g m m over l equal to zero so eventually you get to this equation Anyway, after you got this equation, then the rest will be very easy. You have the m, small m cancel out, and then you just have to rearrange them properly. So g, big M over L, and the two move to the other side, and then you have the v square, and therefore you have the uh, square root here. So that is how you can derive the equation as we need. Uh, escape velocity equal to root 2 g, big M over L. Now let's talk about the assumptions. The first assumption that I think most of you will be able to uh, figure out is there are other planets. Because right now, for example, if this is Earth, 
then you're just talking about oh when we want to launch uh, the objects away from earth how much energy and therefore how much velocity it has to reach uh, but then in reality uh, our galaxy is not just earth right there's also moon and also other planets as well depending on which direction you go of course and so the assumption here is the other planets attractions are ignored so um yeah like what i said the gravitational force from other planets are not considered and therefore you don't have to account for their gravitational potential energy assumption number two would be only specific for earth mostly uh, because this is something related to the atmosphere so for the atmosphere since we are launching on the surface right i mean imagine nasa or uh, spacex when they launch their rocket or spaceship they have to launch from the surface of the earth they can't launch outside of atmosphere that's not really feasible so we have to get through the atmosphere and you know atmosphere contain air particles basically and therefore there must be air resistant so therefore there must be further negative work done you have to overcome when you travel through that atmosphere all right so my wording will be saying no atmosphere is involved and therefore no work done against air resistant and lastly uh, just now i mentioned the rocket or spaceship and if you think about those they actually have a few tank so they don't just have oh uh, they just burn those fuel and get to escape velocity and stop providing or burning the fuel they actually keep burning it throughout the whole journey if necessary of course so not just that particular velocity they have to reach at the right surface they can keep burning so they don't actually have to reach a safe velocity uh, they can just provide more energy from the chemical energy of the fuel later on so uh, the equation that we did was more about a uh, something called the ballistic motion that means uh, we just simply launch it imagine you have a ball and you just simply flow it and the ball doesn't actually have an engine or like a fuel tank to further release the energy inside so uh, this is the assumption that we have and I can phrase it as ballistic motion is assumed instead of uh, the powered motion. Now I want you to try this example 10.11. Pause the video and try it now. A few moments later. Part A is asking you why this probe or small mass whatsoever cannot escape the gravitational field of the planet. So that's of course something related to uh, the idea of infinity, reaching infinity and you still have tiny bit of speed um, and that is escape velocity so if you try to look at the kinetic energy it has when it is being launched uh, we can already see actually the kinetic energy we can say equal to 4 gm over 5 r and that is smaller than negative or no not really negative just one right gm wait actually i think there there's a typo so it, there it it cannot be having the big M only, there should be a small M also. So that's why I put a hint uh, asking you to find the typo in the in the question. And so, yeah, that should be the typo. Um, and then this is obviously smaller than the gravitational potential energy that we have to overcome until we move to infinity, which is G big M small M over R, right? Because if you look at the coefficient this is 4 over 5 this is 1 so obviously uh, the GPE is going to be bigger than the KE required and therefore it would never uh, reach to infinity and therefore uh, we if you cannot reach to infinity uh, we cannot claim that you escape from the gravitational field because if you look at the equation f equal to big g m1 m2 over r square uh, as long as you have a finite value of r which is a distance from the planet then you have a tiny bit of gravitational force unless you can say oh the distance actually tends to infinity then mathematically the whole thing will tend to zero so in that case then you can claim yourself escaped from the gravitational field and so now uh, part b is asking you so what kind of orbit will it settle down in so let's think about this when it is being launched 
from the surface of the planet, uh, you can find out is total energy. So from the total energy, uh, that would define eventually that whatever orbit that it located in. So uh, let's do this. So the total energy will be the expression that they have given, of course, uh, with the correct one, uh, with the small m. And not to forget there is gravitational potential energy as well. So that will be plus a negative. So I just put that negative. Uh, G M M over L. Okay, so eventually you want to rectify this expression into the one that we have. And so obviously we have the G M M over out there we go to be extracted. And this is four over five, this is negative one. So eventually you have negative one over five of this whole thing. And if you compare with the general equation that we have earlier when we try to derive the total energy, which is negative gmm over 2r, then you can find out the expression. So let's try to do this equal to the negative gmm over 2r, right? So this r is the actual radius of the orbit. So uh, we can look at this and uh, I, I tend to not to put down you know, this mark because I, there's an equal sign here. So just for your information uh, about the presentation. So you, you shouldn't be oh, canceling out this. I know it's very convenient, but then that, kind, that kind of ruined the presentation. So let's not do that. Uh, we will be able to find all these things cancel out at the top, including a negative and then we have 2r equals to 5r like this and so the r would equal to 5 over 2 of the big r so that means the the orbital radius because that's that's what we want to find will equal to 5 over 2 of the big r so that is uh, the planet radius with 5 over 2 times all right, let's try one more question. So now here's example 10.13. Pause the video and try it yourself. A few moments later. Okay, first of all, this is a very, very good example to show you two different kinds of motion. Uh, what I mean is if you pay attention to the question, uh, what they are trying to do is now they have a planet and they are now trying to launch this object okay to the outer space but of course it is not enough because that's what they said the speed is only half of the escape velocity and so there must be as there must be a certain point that the small mass will return back to this planet for sure right because you can't reach infinity then you got attracted back and the thing that i want to emphasize is notice this is not the orbital motion this is not the orbital motion. This is not the orbital motion. And so the main difference is when this small mass traveling through to the best, to the largest distance it can, it will literally hit velocity to be zero instead of having a certain orbital speed. So that is something you need to pay attention to. All right, if you're okay with that, then we can start to build our equations. We will be thinking about conservation of energy, of course, because they should have the total energy to be conserved. So here we have got KE1 and GPE1. Uh, one is just to indicate this is at this instant. And then when it reach to the so-called turning point, the largest distance, then uh, we will only have GPD, let's call it 2, while KE will become 0. So we can just uh, ignore it. And so by conservation of energy, then KD1 plus GPD1 equals to GPD2. Simple. Then we will have the KE to be half mv squared, and then the v is being the escape velocity divided by 2 squared, because this is what uh, the question said, half of the escape speed only. And then we can lazily substitute that back in. For GPE1, that's going to be negative big G, big M, small m over radius L. So radius L. And then at this point, this is going to be negative G, big M, small m over 
the whatever distance that we are trying to calculate. So let's just call it uh, d first. Well, eventually we have to express it in terms of r, but that's okay. Let's just call it d first. Okay, once you set this up, then it should be easy because uh, you just have to find out the expression. So for this one, this is going to be a quarter, first of all, and then there's a square. So let's just write directly out. And then we have, yeah, I think everything just outside to be untouched first. Then we will have two and two cancel out. And then we could uh, try to observe the big G, big M, small M over L. Here we also have another one. Uh, this one is going to be positive one over four minus one so that is going to be negative three over four big g big m small m r and then on the other side is going to be untouched again and then here we can then get oh, all these things cancel out including the negative so we can find out the big i mean d we try to find would equal to four over three r so four over three r will be the final answer or is it? Many people when they try to do question in chapter 10, uh, they have one very careless mistake and that will lose them one mark very often. That is, you have to check the question saying the distance that you're trying to find is from the center of the planet or from the surface of the planet. And if you look at this question, you're saying the larger distance from the surface of the planet Okay, so that is something you need to pay attention because if you recall when we try to apply this equation, all right, which is a GPE equation, it's talking about measuring from the center of the planet. And therefore, for your final, final answer, uh, you got to say the whatever expression you say, oh, larger distance uh, is going to be 4 over 3 L minus 1 L. So eventually you only have 1 over 3 L. And that is to say, uh, eventually you have something like this. This is one big L and then that particular probe can only go up to like this roughly. Actually it's quite funny, isn't it? I mean, if you think about uh, this probe, if it can get the whole escape velocity, it can go up to infinity, literally. But now, you just cut down the escape velocity by half, then you can't even go beyond one out of your planet. So, yeah, it, it makes a big difference, simply. So in this video, you learn about how to derive the escape velocity equation. Although this equation is given in the data booklet, it's still essential to understand the assumptions behind and what are the requirements when we try to apply this equation. I hope you enjoy learning physics with me. If you do so, please hit the like button now and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.